so sweet Holy Spirit Move me now Hallelujah hey, Come and raise up the worship Spirit move
come and lift up your worship. Spirit of the living God. Spirit. Connect your worship. Father, we love you, Jesus. Oh, can we sing to the Spirit? Come and blow your worship. Spirit, pray. Spirit, pray. Pray to the Father. Oh, Spirit, pray. Spirit, pray to the Father. Come and connect your worship. Come and rest of your worship. Oh, Spirit, pray. Spirit, pray. Spirit, pray. To the Father. Come and lift up your worship. Somebody raise up your sound. Raise up your sound in this place. Raise up your sound. Oh, Spirit, pray.
Spirit, pray for me tonight. Spirit, pray. Spirit, pray to the Father. Come and just communicate. If it's only the Spirit of God, I can help you tonight. Spirit, pray for me tonight. Spirit, pray. Spirit, pray. So come for me, oh Holy Ghost. I'm getting tired. My strength is tired. Hey, hey, hey. Come for me, oh Holy Ghost. I'm getting tired. My strength is failing me. Come for me, oh Holy Ghost. Come for me. Come for me. Come for me tonight. Come for me, oh, Holy Ghost. Come for me. Strength is telling me. Come for me. Come for me tonight. Come and rest of your worship. Come for me. Yeah. I'm getting tired. Getting weary in my spirit. Come for me. Getting tired, my strength is failing me. Come for me, oh, Holy Ghost. Come for me, come for me, come for me tonight. Come for me, oh, Holy Ghost. I'm getting tired, strength is failing me. Come for me, come for me tonight. Speak for me, oh Holy Ghost. I'm getting tired. My strength is failing me. Speak for me, oh Holy Ghost. Speak for me. Speak for me tonight. Speak for me, oh Holy Ghost. I'm getting tired. Strength is failing me. Speak for me. Speak for me. Speak for me, oh Holy Ghost. I time talking it. I'm getting tired. My strength has failed me. Speak for me, oh Holy Ghost. Speak for me. Somebody just left up your hands. And begin to appreciate God. Father, we worship you, Jesus. Father, we reverence you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are exalted, Jesus. We give you the glory, Jesus. I have come to the 
people to wrestle with you with Paul. Jesus, hey, Rapalatasha, Rapalatasha, speak to God, speak to God, people of God, open up your mouth. The Bible says his hands are not short, that he cannot reach you, his ears are not deaf, that he cannot hear your voice. The Bible says, put me. For your good, it can turn off for your good sins of God. Abash, Abayada, Ekabalado Shata, Rako Palata. The reason why you are experiencing what you are experiencing, because the devil don't want you to press him. The devil don't want you to talk about his goodness. Hey, just say, even though you slim me, but yet, Makayabo Shata. In the evening, I will hear so too long. Help of my enemies. Daddy, your burn all over me is love. In my first question, I will hear so too long. Daddy, in my pain, I will hear so too deep. Help of my enemies. Oh, oh God. Your burn all over me. When they deflect me, now we assault your name, Lord. When they turn their back against me, now we assault your name, Lord. Help of my enemies. Mm. Your pan all over me, this Lord. Hey, I will assault you, Lord. For enemies. Your pan all over me. I went and saw you, Lord. For that one lifted, for that one lifted, for that one lifted, for that one lifted, for that one lifted. I feel the power of God in this place. Hey, 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 come on, I'm all shut up. Hey, I went and saw you, Lord. Can you jam your hands together for him? Palado Shataya. My father said something, and I took that very seriously. Before we go into the place of praise, let me share it with you. He said, There are people that woke up this morning. They told their family, I am going to come back. As soon as they got on the road, God wept them out of the way. He said, that person could be you standing here. There are people that went to bed last night sound. But when they opened their eyes this morning, they were on the hospital bed. That person could be you standing here. There are people that went to bed last night up to now. They are still calling them. They cannot respond to their name. That person could be you. But in the midst of it all, he kept you. It's not another reason to celebrate him. It's not another reason to praise him. What is the car? What is the riches without life? Celebrate Jesus everywhere you are. Now, one thing I will say to you, in a place of praise, if you find out that your neighbor is disturbing you, Leave from that spot. Go to somewhere that you can praise your God. Because you know where he took you from. You know the things he delivered you from. You know the place that he's carrying you. So you know how you will position yourself to praise him. Keep your focus. Hey, I will exalt you, Lord. For 
Lord that will lift me Amen. above my enemies. Hey, your power over me this. Things my God went to unto the Lord. 
will never, never leave me. Jesus, my own shit. That is why you will carry my love. My God, oh. look at me. I am in your presence now. You will carry my love. Fuck! 
This Wednesday, I want to say to you, this is a world of life, outreach, mission in the national church. Here we believe in what the Bible says, we do not add, need or subtract. We believe in the move of God, that is the Holy Spirit. We believe also that God is still doing miracles, that is, we believe in the miracles of God. Amen. So we say to you, you are welcome. Just if you are in need of some attention urgently, please get in touch with our ushers. To help you to find your way out. Hallelujah. I want to take this time as well to recognize in our maze pastors, prophets, or prophetess. I want to say to you, you are all very welcome as well. We recognize your presence in our midst. We say to you, thank you for coming. God bless you and have a wonderful time in Jesus' mighty name. We are about to give you our announcement or ask of you now is to give us your attention. We gather three times in a week to worship. We are here on Sundays on Wednesdays and on Fridays to go through our time of God. Sunday is our experience service here that starts at 7 o'clock in the morning by way of the word teaching. And right after the word teaching, we'll go through the rest of our service that runs up to at most 12 o'clock. Wednesday is our anointing service. The service starts at 3 o'clock and it runs up to at most 8 o'clock. Friday as well is our Holy Ghost service alongside my father, my father prayer session. A moment will come, we seek the face of God, pray, the power of God flow, touch the lives of people. Amen. That as well starts at 3 and it runs up to at most 8 o'clock. But I say I will believe in the move of the Holy Ghost. Why in session, what the power of God take charge of the atmosphere. We have no other option but the law. God touch the lives of his people. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. We have platforms that you can go on to be a part of the service no matter where you are. In Jesus' mighty name. We are on the social media. We are on Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope, and on Twitter. Where you go to be a part of the service no matter your location. On Facebook, to answer the church, for those of you that are not following us, you search in Apostle Abraham Kruman Ministries. On YouTube, on Primary School, and on Twitter, you search in Apostle Abraham Kruman. Another immediate in which you follow us is by listening to Vision FM 102.1, and as well as witnessing your own television. For those that have SATCOM, we are on SATCOM on Channel 3 to view the service or programs from this great commission. We view at 3 o'clock. Just if you pass 3 o'clock, you can catch us at 9 o'clock. That is on SACON Channel 3. Hallelujah. For those of you desiring, contributing towards the building of the house of God, desiring to do your offering, your tithe, and maybe you want to sow a seed, 
as God be a blessing unto you as per your distance from the church. We have our numbers, these are official numbers of the church. You can use to do your tithe, your offering, your contribution towards the building of the house of God. Or maybe God bless you, you desire to sow a seed as well. You can use the numbers. Both numbers are Lone Star numbers, and the name attached to the numbers is P. Colley. It reads out 0881 716912. 0881 716912. The next one reads 0555. 359738 These are official numbers of the church. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Well, this is from the women department. They here want to appreciate all of you who contributed towards the success of the Just End Women program. Hallelujah. She asks us to extend this um, gratitude to the workers of this great commission, all that contributed, that is, from the pastors all the way down to the ushers. She appreciates all of you. Amen. She said, May God wish you bless you. And for those of you by our own, our own way, we contributed as well. She extends her appreciation to you as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, on the 12th, that is the 10th, from the 10th to the 12th will be. A powerful crusade on a Broadway fee under the theme the Healing and Delivering Crusade. In Jesus' mighty name, it starts from the 10th to the 12th. Two sessions, I believe, each day. The morning session will start at 7 o'clock in the morning and will run up to 12 o'clock. And the second session, that's the evening session, will start at 4 o'clock in the evening and runs up to at most. 8 o'clock in the evening as well. That has to do with the healing and deliverance crusade that will be held this month, that is next month in the month of April um, 2024. In Jesus' mighty name. So for those of us that are in the Broadway community, we want to encourage you to help extend the invitation to your loved ones both far and near. You just don't know when you will encounter the power of God. In Jesus' mighty name, please, we want to encourage you to observe your phones. Make sure they are on silent or of operation to avoid distraction. For those of us that came early and the more grace too, maybe there was some material needed and maybe they weren't there. You can stop by now and make sure of what you'll be in need of. Just if it is called upon for prayers, this will avoid you being in the rush. That is the oil, the mantle, the water, and some other prophetic materials. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving me your time. Have a God blessed day in Jesus' powerful name. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together for Jesus, whatever you are. Celebrate the grace of this house. In Jesus' name. Okay, again, the drama team of this great convention is about to do for you a teachable drama in Jesus' name. So the advice that you give. Your attention to the drama team. The drama team is about to do a drama that is titled So a man ticket, so he is. Hallelujah. Today, men in the house, whatever we perceive in our minds, it is what we become. The Bible says, death and life last way in the power of what? Our tongues. Hallelujah. So whatsoever that comes from out of our mouth, whether positive things or negative things. Is what we become. The drama team is about to teach you the negative and the positive side of wrong things and the right thing. Put your hands together as we perform.
to. <laughs> Why has life decided to treat me like this? I have lost my husband. I have lost my children. I have lost everything I suffered for. Families, friends, have all turned their back on me. Nowhere to run and no one to run to. The only thing <laughs> I have right now is my life. <laughs> In your mind, 
But tell it yourself. You want to die. You want to kill yourself. That's what brought in the angel of death into your life. You almost got killed. But what you say, my child, listen to my advice right now. Never make decision when you are faced with the situation of life. Listen to me, my child. When you are faced with the situation of life, no matter what it may be, just wake up and begin to prophesy positive things in your life. So now, wake up and stand and start to prophesy positive things into your life and you shall become them. Oh, oh, thank you so much, my Savior. All of this time, I never knew and realized that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. From this minute and spot, I am a winner, not a loser. From this minute and spot, I prophesy into my life. I am a winner, not a loser. I am rich, not poor. I am a blessing, not a curse. I am lifted, not cast down. I shall live and shall not die. I am fruitful and not fruitless. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, so shall it be. somebody put your hands together for Jesus if you love him put your hands together for Jesus hallelujah God is good God is good and all of the time say to your neighbor next by you say neighbor say welcome to church hear me distinguish Ladies and gentlemen, God's greatest desire for you and I is that we should prosper. God's ultimate desire for our life is that we prosper. That is why he said in 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible said, and I quote, Love a witch above everything that ye prospered, even as the soul prospered. Ladies and gentlemen, but there is a key, a key that opened or opened the doors of prosperity into the life of a believer and that is the key that I want you to be in the know of do you want to know that key do you want to know that key uh, that yes is kind of a being low do you want to know that key yeah I mean it is the key that great man use to arrive at the place of possibilities and prosperity that key is called giving say giving say giving say giving the bible told us that in luke chapter 6 in verse 38 died the more 
a person gave is the more you will see. The Bible calls and says, even in good measure, in press time. So that would indicate that a believer who don't understand the place of giving, such a believer is deprived of kingdom prosperity. You hear me? If our financial life is good, if things would turn around in our hands for our betterment, if we will see abundance, we must understand the place of giving. That is the reason the Bible told us that in John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world. So my question to you will be, what can you give as an expression of your love for God? Giving number one is an expression of a passing love for God. Any relationship in, in our present in our present generation, a relationship that giving is accent is going nowhere. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? A relationship that no one can give, such relationship is going nowhere. And remember that what God wants for you is an intimacy. It's a relationship. And such relationship is guaranteed by our ability to give. The Bible told us that in Acts chapter 9 that there was a woman called Tapita. Tapita was a very good woman. The Bible says she gave to the degree that even the entire community could testify of how generous she was or she was. The Bible says certain things happened. Tabitha died. When Tabitha died, the community gathered. They said, no way. We cannot allow such a that speak in times of our need. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a call to you, to me, that in these days, in our age now, God is in search for a man. God is in search for a woman. A woman or a man that he will make. God is in search of a person not just to bless, but to make he or she a blessing. How can that be? It is wherein such person have the spirit of giving. I pray for you. The spirit of giving is locating you now. I said the spirit of giving is locating you now. One thing that giving attract, giving attract honor. Any man that can give will often be honor. If you cannot give, forget about honor. Forget about respect. So if you need honor in this kingdom, understand the place of giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You hear me? God is in search. When you look around, there are so many needs of his house, of his temple, of his building. God is in search of that one man, that one woman, that one sister who will make a vow and say, until I die, the house of God will not lack. Until the house of God will not lack until I die. The house of God won't go out of light, won't go out of quarrel. The church won't lack. The, the servant of God will lack. If that one person is among you here today, an uncommon favor that will open screen's door will locate you this week. I said it will locate you this week. It will locate you this week. 
You say, Amen. That you are talking to. Ladies and gentlemen, be that one. Say, I am that one. Be that one that God will boast off. Be that tapita. We just got through. I thought I just got through with a fruitful woman program. Hear me? There is no fruit if there is no if there is not a seed. If you don't plant, you cannot reap. If you cannot give, don't expect to be given to. And the best place to give, hear me, is in the house of God. The best place to give, the best blessing to give to is to the servant of God. Be a giver today. Be a person today who will, will, who will carry the burden of the needs of the church. And I can trust you, your house won't go dry. I'm just talking to you. I say your house won't go dry. And your place won't go dry. You will not lack in the name of Jesus. You will not lack in the name of Jesus. You say amen. It's you I'm talking to. You say amen that you are talking to. I see God raising a millionaire in this place. I see God raising people of high class in this place. Say amen and collect the oil. In Jesus mighty name. The Bible said in in Psalm 35, verse 27, he said, Let them shout for joy and be glad. Favor my righteous cause. Yet, let them say continuously, Let the Lord be magnified. We shall have pleasure. We shall have pleasure in the prosperity of God's, of seven, of God's seven, of God people. Some David wrote and he said, he said, God pleasure is in your prosperity. God pleasure, what made God happy is in our, plus, uh, in our prosperity. But yeah, me, the, 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 the greatest trap of the enemy to keep a man in perpetual poverty, it is that thing called stinginess, say stinginess. Yeah. find it difficult to give into the house of God sometimes you will agree with me that when you come to church and there is a need you can want to give but there is a power that says today that thing will let you go any power that has been stopping you to do what is right that power lets you go now say amen and be free yeah so the Bible told us, Saint David told us, that the pleasure of God is in our prosperity. Let me tell you something. These were men who governed their days. We, we don't need to look too far. We have a man in our midst. We have a man in Liberia. A man who has broke all the, all the boundaries, who has broke all the laws. All the limitation we have our father, our father, one quality of our father, our father is a giver, a desperate giver. You and I here can testify of it. That is one of the reasons for which our father cannot lack. And it is an error to be a, a doctor, someone who is stingy. Sometimes I wonder who born you. Excuse me for that expression. Because if the person who born you, if that person is a giver, you must be a giver. Lion born what? Lion. You agree with me, right? Lion born lion. Hear me. God wants to change your life. God wants to change your intention. God want to make you happy. God want to make money a slave to you. But he will only do that if you can give. If nothing 
means something to you in his temple. If nothing is too high for you to give to him, hear me. One thousand dollar is is too it is it is too little that you can give as offering. Some of you, your offering can move from twenty la liberty. And you say, I'm an apostle, daughter, daughter of grace. Daughter of grace, your offering can move from 20. What can and grace be that? So much you, your offering, the highest offering you ever put in your life, that 50 liberty. The day you put 100, oh, that day umba, you won't walk in the house. But hear me, there is a more to that. You can be better than that. You can do better than that. You know, let me share this with you. There was a day in my own life, mm, coming up as a very young man, for me to put, 20, for me to put 50 that even for that for offering. The thing I'm talking here to, it, it used to be me too. But there's a day when I look at G, I drop it. I look at Nico, I look at Dan, I drop it. Today, mm, not, nothing can... Not, not, nothing is too big now that I can't give God. And I want to pray for just three persons in this meeting who have made up their mind that they will they, they won't wait. They won't wait until our Father called. They won't wait until they have been called upon to give to God. I pray for you. A screams miracle will hit you this week. A screams miracle will hit you this week. A miracle that will make you never begging, never begging will hit you this week. A miracle that will turn you to absolute prosperity. That miracle will locate you this week. You say amen is locating you now. Ladies and gentlemen, good thing to give. I don't just talk it, but I'm also a part of it. I'm experienced. Hallelujah. One four to five years back. And I have my lies on me. And I lied that were just, just too bold <laughs> by my transportation to come back. But something tell me say, Gary, let my foundation speak to. I mean, you want to go. <laughs> I was fighting to kill her mind when I easy. But guess what? When I drop it. I came out of my house burning for only for me to step on the road. Some other who I've been knowing for a very long time, they pop in. Oh, man of God. I said, my man, you don't even know that. <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, man of God, how you doing? I said, I'm good. Because you already come in, man of God, I can't bake you now. I can't say, my man, I want cafe. How you say, man of God, and the man of God say, you want cafe? No way. I said, my man, grace is working. <laughs> My father's grace is strong. He said, ah, I can see it. But oh man, I got a scared cell. I said, why? He said, I didn't get little here. I, didn't want you, I, I want to be a blessing. I said, why? When well, I go look at it, I have. Half US. I said, this grace, this grace I found, it will speak for you. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking. There is not a giver that lack. You cannot be a giver and you beg. Whenever you drop a panic, there is an abundance. <laughs> When you give, there is a possibility that you will give, you will receive greater more. So I want to pray for you before I drop the mark. That in this meeting, in this anointing service, I pray for you under the grace of our Father. The oil to make you a prosperous person. That oil will fall upon your head. The spirit that will make you a giver and never a lender. You say, Amen, receive the power to give. You say, Amen, receive the oil to give. Shout, Amen. Say, my father, my maker. Say, my father, my creator. Say, as I pray, put upon me the spirit to give. Clap your hands and pray.
put your hands together for the man of God. Indeed, it is a blessing to give. It is not something that you can just talk about it. It's something that you have to practice. Say, I will practice it. Lord, give me the grace to give. Say it like you mean it. Say, Lord, give me the grace to give. Giving is the way forward in the church and outside of the church. Even in our social world, people are regarded based on their pocket power or their poise. Let like Pastor Jeru normally say to us, if you are broke, you are local. No one regards you if you don't have anything to offer. The last time we all heard our father in one of his teachings reminding us, just in case you fall into a problem, you don't have an account in any of the banks. You have nothing in your cash box and something spark up. Who do you turn to? Who do you know that you can run to? Certainly you receive a text message about one of your neighbors or your friend not well, hoping and looking up to you to assist them with maybe something around four or five thousand like brand dollars. And you don't even have the first hundred dollars to buy pepper color. That's the time you say, hey God, what's happening? But trust me, giver never lack. Amen. No, not a day. No one that gave willingly will lack anything. Let us open our Bible to the book of First Samuel chapter 2, look at verses 3. If we move forward in 2024, we have to understand who God is and what God desires for us in moving forward. First Samuel chapter 2, verses 3. There is something there that Hannah talked about in her testimony. I believe we all can just look at it. If you are there, you say amen. First Samuel 2, 3. The Bible says in the account of Hannah's testimony, it said, take no, take no more so exceeding proudly. Sorry. Turn no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the law is a God of knowledge. For the law is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The man of God taught you a few minutes ago about giving. Our God is the God of knowledge. He sees everything. He knows everything. Everyone sitting here today for this last and nothing service in the month of March 2024. God knows each and every one of our hearts. He knows our intent. Leaving our houses to come. What we said, what we did, as I speak to you, I don't know. But God knows. So if the Bible can remind us that he's a God of knowledge and he weighed every action, it speaks to the reality that whatever that you claim to be doing, Thinking that nobody seeing you, God is seeing you. You will certainly give a can of your word, your action. Amen. So in the house of God, let us stop joking, compose ourselves, and 2024 should not be a waste. Every time our Father comes up to bring the word of God to us, taking hour to study. It is not just about him. It is about you. It is about me. understanding that you weren't just born to live. But as it is written in Psalm 118, 17, that you shall not die, but live to declare the works of the law. Amen. Live to declare the works of the law. Many have not come to that point because if God is a God of knowledge, Genesis 1, we are reminded that he said, let us make men in our image and after our likeness. If we are made after the image and likeness of God, then who are you? You must have knowledge in your endeavor. The Bible says, my people perish 
because of what? Lack of what? Knowledge. Without knowledge, brother, sister, you're going nowhere. Our father, apostle, Abraham Kroma will never come up when he cannot understand what God is saying to him concerning you. This is why many at times we wait on him while he's waiting on God. He needs to hear God before coming to you. He doesn't want to come and give his feelings to you. But he wants to come telling you what God has said to him about you. Like in the conference that just ended, God reminded him that enough is enough. That many of us, we haven't crossed the line. Those of you that were in that service, our father declared by the leading of our position, I have to say, we were being made in the image of God. No. You know, at times, we are stuck with situation of life and we want to wonder and be asking ourselves, is there a God? Indeed, there is a God. Tell someone, say, there is a God. Tell to someone, say, there is a God. There is a living God. But where the problem lies is our understanding. Once upon a time, our father said, God will bless you, but God will not brush your tooth. God will not take you in the bathroom to waste water on you. No, that do. Apostle Abraham Kroman continued to talk about, say, God faith. Then you need to wake up. Tell someone, say, wake up. The Bible isn't just a book that you will keep. When it's the morning, you wipe the doors for on it, put it under your arm, you come in. If God is a God of knowledge, he said, my house shall be the house of prayer. He said, call on me and I will answer you. Why can't we put this thing into practice? Or do we want to come with a mindset that we can just start it today and it work? It doesn't work that way. 15 years, God's servant, Apostle Abraham Kroman, continued to come with the word of God to us. And he's still praying for more. What more about you? What more about me? The things of God works if you have the knowledge of God. If you know who God is, you will not struggle. In the place of giving, whatever that you want to do under the face of this eye, you have to believe that there is a God. And if the Bible says those who don't have wisdom should ask him. If you lack knowledge, ask God. Solomon encounter with God, we are reminded. He had all right to ask for everything that anyone could ask for. He said, if I will move forward, I need what? Knowledge, I need wisdom to lead your people that are planted like the dust of the earth. If this 2024 will be a year for us, will be a fruitful year, that the effort of God's servant apostle Abraham Kuma will not be wasted. That every word for him through the God of this commission coming to us will not be wasted. We need to wake up. If you now try to ask, those of you sitting there looking at me now, how many persons came with Bible? How many persons came with notepad? How many persons after service can go back to their note and try to go over it and find Bible verses linking to that scripture that were given? We don't. As soon as we finish speaking in tone, we turn our back towards the gate, it is over. We go on back in the flesh. Tuesday, Wednesday morning, we are reminded of oh, today and not in service. Friday morning, all oh, at Holy Ghost night. Sunday, all oh, at the last Sunday in the month of March. That's not God. Apostle Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. You will never graduate from any institution when you cannot complete your study. No, it is not possible. Even if I won, they will not give you that clearance until you clear that one. So if you want to experience the God of Wolomi, you have to wake up. Be not told. Don't allow someone to tell you, say, oh, we're fasting tomorrow. Sometimes we do this thing just to what build our holy faith, empower ourselves. But it is important that you take that time by yourself. Be the hand that has sat and said, no, this can be. For this God to tell me that he's better than 10 sons, I must wake up. Tell someone, say, I must wake up. Don't say it like you're hungry. Say, I must wake up. 
The conference just ended today. Some of you sitting here to say you've been out of church for two months. Say, I must wake up. Wherever you are, when you wake up and stretch your legs, straighten your legs. Everybody wake up, wherever you are. Walk around and straighten your legs. Walk around. Continue to say that I must wake up. Say it like you mean it. Say, I must wake up. Say, I must wake up. If I will go forward, I must wake up. Straighten your legs as you declare it over your life. Don't forget the Bible reminded us that death and life lie in the power of the tongue. And he that loveth shall eat the fruit thereof. Whatever you declare upon your life, so shall it be. Say it, I must wake up. Enough is enough. If I will move forward, I must wake up. I must wake up. In Jesus' mighty name, have your beautiful seed. Indeed, you have to wake up. Add this to your morning and evening declaration. I must wake up. Nobody will give it to you if you can wake up. God is a God of knowledge. He weighed every action. God never moved in the direction of anyone let's say. Weak. Quit to give up. No. He's searching for those that have the strength to make it in this world. Remember the Bible says that this world lies in the hands of the wicked. To survive here, you got to be strong. How do you believe in God and believe in his word? Let me say this to you. Many a times we pray, Oh Lord, let your will be done in my life. But have you ever asked yourself what the will of God is? The will of God is God. Tell someone say the will of God is God. Tell someone say the will of God is God. That is, God is his word. He's not different from his word. God is his word. So if you want the will of God to prevail in your life, go back in your Bible. Search what God said concerning you. Not everything in the Bible is for you. Our Father has reminded our time with our number that the Bible is written, contain the Word of God, contain accounts of events that took place for our learning. Not everything that will be for you. But if you want the Word of God to prevail in your life, you go by in the Bible, search for His Word. Like He said in Jeremiah 29, 13, he said, you will find me if you search for me with your whole heart. In Jeremiah 29, 13, he said, you will only find me if you search for me with your whole heart. So if you want to experience the move of God in your life in 2024, stop sitting and looking up to someone to do it for you. You have to wake up. Nobody will do it for you. Even we come here, our Father pray and declare over your life. It's what? Or their faith. You must put it into action. Our Father said that what you did before and you fail, go back again and do it again. That's how it works. So if you will find God, you need to search for God with your whole heart. You don't have to be pastor. But you can search for God so that his story will remember you. Amen. Mary Magdalene, we are reminded in the book of Matthew 26, I believe in verses 13. What she did, she took that expensive perfume or oil, whatever you call it, that the disciples of Jesus criticized it. But Jesus reminded them, say, wherever this gospel is preached, this woman will be remembered. I believe if there's nothing someone can remember her for, they will remember her for that. Whenever you come to that passage, you will never jump over it. It's a scene with Hannah that the man of God was telling you about. That she died and people went and said, no, this can't happen. Hannah can't die. And they kept praying. They were reminded that Peter is not far from them. The Bible said Peter came over and prayed for Hannah and Hannah came back to life. Something you have to do that your generation will remember you. You can't do it when you are sitting. Say, I will wake up. If you wash up, many a times we will go for decoration. Sometimes you will see some grave, people surrounded it. 
gave him all of the praises. You see another one, you know, one person standing by him. You weren't just born to pass around. But you have to leave your mark in this life. How does it go? You have to wake up. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put that beautiful hands together for Jesus. We are about to do our offertory. As you are taught, giving remains the way forward, nothing more, nothing less. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. If you have your Bible, open with me to the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 2. Let's see what the word of God says concerning what we call thanksgiving. That's the first phase of our offertory. Jonah chapter 2. There is something there that you can learn from and I can learn from it. Whenever we come in the presence of God, let us be ready to learn. The house of God is a place of learning. Jonah reminded us that he was confronted with issues of life that he gave up. He believed that it was over. The many of us sit here. We have come to a point where we say, Lord, let it just be so. I have tried, I have tried, I have tried. But Jonah said, in all, I ended up by saying, Lord, thank you. Normally, I speak to us that the most important thing we can ever tell God thank you for is the life we have. The Bible says the living door is better than the dead lion. Imagine if today was your, life, your, your last day on the face of the earth. And you are reminded that today is your last day. What will you say? As Hezekiah was reminded, put your horse in order, the Lord said, your time is out. But because he woke up during his days, the Bible says, he reminded God, I'm not arguing with you, but this is not my time. And the Lord added 15 years. Thanksgiving helps someone who haven't come to the point of believing God. Whenever you testify the goodness of God, you put in someone in the position to know that there is a God. Wherever you are, those who have ears to hear, they will certainly hear. Wake up with your Thanksgiving seat. Everywhere you are, hear me. Take on our Thanksgiving seat. You will continue to declare over it, I must wake up. It is the time to wake up and do something. Lift it up as you are standing. Father, we thank you for this service. The God of Wolomi take control as your people have come to worship you. Let your name be glorified now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Come forward. Jesus, the honor of my life. With you, all things are made possible.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9. We're reading from verse 6, 7, and 8. 1 Samuel 9, verse 6, 7, and 8. What we are about to do is kingdom building. Someone say kingdom building. Whenever we speak of kingdom building, yet a grace land. In Wolomi, World of Life Outreach Mission International. We are talking about so many things that we need to give our attention to. Example, we have the generator. So many things we have to give our attention to. But let us see what the word of God says. In 1 Samuel 9 verse 6. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he saith come surely to pass. Now let us go, Taylor, by revenge he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, watch shall we bring the man for the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of God what have we there is not a present to bring for the man of God sons and daughters of this commission nobody will build this place but you nobody nobody if you wake up, you have to wake up with the reality that there are things here need to be done. If you look on my right, you will see the guys digging foundation. What about to go on over there is to build the children ministry for our own use. That the rainy season is coming, our children will not be vulnerable to rain, but they will have shelter as you have. How do you feel when you sit in comfortably and your children scatter everywhere, no way to guard them? Angels will not dig that foundation. Like I said to you,
Verses there. Exodus 36, verse 3, 4, and 5. Get the Bible verses, it will help you a lot. We are about to do the Lord's offering. Exodus 36, verse 3, 4, and 5. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary. For the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it well up. And they brought yet unto him the free offerings every morning. Verse 4, all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man for his work which they made. Verse 5, and they speak unto Moses saying, the people bring much than enough. The people bring much more than enough. The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the law commanded to make. The people bring much more than enough. I'm imagining and praying when will we get to that day that we will bring much more than enough. It will only happen when we wake up and believe that enough is enough. You can't be in the house of God and lack the knowledge of God. Wake up and prove to those that are out there that 2024 is my year of moving forward. Change your position wherever you are. Change your position. Take out the Lord's offering. Speak to it. Let God give you the grace to bring much more than enough. Much more than enough. Esau said to Jacob, I have more than enough. When you get to that point of having more than enough, trust me, your testimony will be endless. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. The God I give it, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Come to the altar wherever you, you are. You are the same yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. You never change yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you.
Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, I want to take this time to welcome you all to our live anointing service. It is important that you stay connected because today you and I are going to have our own experience of God's anointing. Celebrate Jesus wherever you are. Thank you, Lord, with the time given to me. I want to speak on the anointing of God. Somebody say the anointing of God. I'm not getting you clear. Say the anointing of God. Many of times, many preachers have brought to our knowledge, talking on the anointing of God from a different, different dimension. And many of the things been said we can count on them to be true. Hallelujah. From my own side of it, there is a revelation that I would, I would love to share with every one of us concerning the anointing of God. Quickly, let us turn to the Bible book of Exodus chapter 30 verse 30. Exodus 30 verse 30 Okay For it reads And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his son And consecrate them That they may minister Unto me In the priest office. Thou shalt anoint Aaron and his son. For which purpose were they to be anointed for? The Bible says that they may minister. So from the context of the scripture, I get to understand and realize that the anointing of God is God's ability. If you are going to function on the dimension of the supernatural, then it means that the anointing of God is required. There is no way possible that you can operate on the dimension of the supernatural without the anointing of God. It is the anointing of God that gave you the privilege, the opportunity to function on the dimension of the supernatural. The Bible says Aaron and his son 
having no knowledge in the operation of the priesthood of his, in order for them to operate on that dimension, the Bible said they were being instructed to be anointed. The Bible said, in the anointing of Christ that comes upon you, you need no man to teach you anything. For that sin anointing, that wish that you shall receive, the Bible says it shall teach you all things. So in order for Aaron and his son to have that ability as a priest to function on that dimension, the Bible said they needed the anointing of God. There are many of us here today, the reason why our Christian life is showing no dimension that we are a Christian because we lack God anointing. It is the anointing that enables you to function in your Christian hood office. Am I talking to somebody? If you are here today, if you want to function as a Christian and lacking the anointing of God, you will be trading on the wrong dimension. You will be trading on the wrong path. You will not have any understanding of your Christian hood. So I pass back to let you know today if you are going to function in your Christian hood office, it means that you need God's anointing. Lacking the anointing anointing of God, you are off track, lacking the anointing of God, you will be serving a God that you have no idea about, you may think that what you are doing, it is right the Bible said there is a way that sin a right to a man but the end leads to destruction, I pass back to let you know today, you need the anointing of God, if you are going to function under the dimension as a son of God if you are going to function under the dimension as a daughter of God, lacking the anointing is not possible. The Bible says, when God needed Aaron and his son, the instruction was given to them, and not Aaron and his son, because they have a function, they have an assignment in order for them to execute this assignment as a priest. They need the anointing of God. I pass part to let you know today the anointing of God is God empowerment. I cannot be holding this microphone talking to you while you are seated without the anointing of God. It is the anointing of God that caused me to talk like this. If you have that anointing, you will not sit down quiet in your seat. That anointing is coming upon your life. And make up your mind in the next minute to come. When that anointing shall fall upon you, God will empower you to function. Oh, I don't like your amen at all. You say amen, carry that anointing now. You say amen, carry that anointing now. Let your amen sound like a thunder. Sit down for one minute, let me talk to you. The anointing of God comes to help us in every dimension and function for which God has given you a particular assignment. The assignment given to our Father in the Lord can in no way be executed when the anointing of God is absent. It is the anointing of God that is placed upon our Father that enable him to function under the dimension of the supernatural. If you must have access and function in the supernatural, then it means that you need the anointing of God. Lacking the anointing of God, you cannot function in the dimension of the supernatural. Your function become limited. You only function from the physical world. But if you are going to function from the dimension of the supernatural and have control over the physical world, it means that you need the anointing of God. It is the anointing of God that gave you that supremacy over principalities and powers. There is no way you can lack the anointing of God 
and you stand before principalities and power not that because it is written that behold I gave you power you cannot just stand in front of the devil and say that it is written God has said in his word he gave me power to train over snakes and scorpions that cannot work when the anointing is absent that only become effective when the anointing of God is inside of you because if you take chance because you said that it is written so you stand on the foundation of it is written and lacking the anointing of God my brother my sister if no one has told you this before let me bring to your mind you are risking your life you are risking the life of your generation because sooner or later if you want to know as the seven songs of Cephas lacking the anointing of God they stand before a demon before they make up their mind they were beating and threw outside of the window lacking the anointing it is a race to stand before principalities and powers lacking the anointing it is a race to say I am the point man in my family I stand as an intercessor you have just put yourself in a dangerous position before you can stand as a point man for your family you need to ask God for his anointing am I talking to somebody am I talking to somebody am I talking to somebody sometimes I pay the many Christians who don't have the anointing and then they want to stand in the position as a point man to their family. Many of them have suffered casualty because of the lacking of such revelation. It is a good thing. I'm not saying that you cannot champion such a cause. But before championing such a cause, your first demand to God, I need your anointing. Don't just read the Bible of what is written in Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 13, where God said, I sought for a man. Not because God is in sought for a man that will stand in a gap and you just make yourself vulnerable and go and say, God, here and act without the anointing of God. You are endangering yourself. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? There are men in the Bible who won their battle. It was not on the basis of their face look. It was not on the basis of their muscle. It was not on the basis of their beauty. They depend on the anointing of God. The anointing of God is everything in our Christian journey. So on this anointing service, I pass back to let you know, in your walk with God, as a Christian, if you have never yearned for anything before in your life, it is about time that you put a demand on God that I cannot continue. This is my Christian race. I cannot continue as a son of God. I cannot continue as a daughter of God without the anointing of God and put my life because it is the anointing of God that it is the anointing of God that gives surety that you are a son of God, that you are a daughter of God. If you believe it, let your amen sound like a thunder. Celebrate Jesus, whatever you are. If you believe it, let your amen sound like a thunder. Let your amen sound like a thunder. Hallelujah. Well, we are so much blessed again to enter in the presence of the Lord. Well, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Well, I want to assure you, you are not a spectator. A spectator will always be clapping. But I believe when this service gets over, you are above to testify. And those you have been celebrating, we celebrate you in the name of Jesus. You say amen now, you collect the blessing. Hallelujah. God, I want you to listen attentively as you call the name of our testifier for the day. Hallelujah. 
Whether you hear your name, quickly come out to do your testimony. Victoria Leah. Keep clapping. Princess Reeves. Keep clapping as they make their way. Mercy F. Jala. Weata Reeves. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Celebrate the goodness of God from this house. Hello, what is your name? Where are you from? And tell us your testimony. In Jesus' name, my name is Princess Ruth from Panagre, Georgia. My testimony is all about my little sister. Two weeks ago, she left the house. I've been worried, but I kept trusting God until this one Sunday. Daddy made a declaration that if anyone here, your siblings are on the street, they will come back. I held on to that word. Yesterday, I was able to solve my system. So I came back to tell you. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord for the goodness in her life. Her 14 years old sister left the house three weeks. But upon the declaration of the man of God, that everyone here that lost your sibling, that left the home, and you are in search of them. But after the declaration, they will return home to the glory of God. Her 14 years old sister returned home. Clap for Jesus. Hello, what is your name? Where are you from? And tell us your testimony. My name is Mercy F. Chala. Please stand, brother and sister. Please help me celebrate grace. I'm so grateful today for another year added to my years. Today is my birthday. And one of the things that baffled me that make me to come before this altar, every year of my birthday, I always find myself sick. And then 2022, I got attacked by the middle of the night. By 3.35, while sleeping, I felt this darkness over me. So I tried to look up my phone and I was feeling sleepy. So when I touched the phone, I felt this heavy hands over my hands. Tried to remove my hands and the person took me from the back. It never stopped there. The next night, the same hour, somebody just started calling my name several times in the night. But when I asked who called my name out there, I only felt that storm, that breeze entering my room. It was all. The next morning, I felt hungry and I decided to go and cook a movie. So, trying to go back inside for the sugar, I saw the rat coming from the ceiling. There is no hole on the ceiling. For that reason, I got sick. I talked in the days, my spit in my mouth, I think all the blood in my mouth. I was coughing with a, with a black steam and blood. I was pronounced cancer. I was pronounced CP. I was pronounced the blood that was inside of me, it couldn't allow me to lay for one week. But yeah, me out today. Staying in the presence of God, celebrating my birthday with good health. I'm so grateful. Hallelujah. Well, you will not understand this. God has done a very good thing for us in this house. Hallelujah. And what she said to me, each time of her birthday, when she enters her birth month, there will be a huge attack. But she said in 2022, the devil launched a very huge attack on her life. Hallelujah. She said she went to bed and she had a staff on her stomach. Hallelujah. And she said after she woke up, she started to go through a lot of sicknesses. Hallelujah. And she said she went to the hospital. The doctor gave her all kinds of sickness. He said she was TB positive. She had cancer. She had typhoid. And all those sicknesses had the place on her. Hallelujah. But she said she, she believed in God and she started coming to this grace. And all the prayer and using all the prophetic material, she said that God was able to deliver her that experience she used to have all disappeared. And she said that prior to her birthday again, in this month, today is her birthday, she said, Monday she had an accident and that almost took her legs. But to the glory of God, God was able to preserve her life and she has come to give the good God from this house a praise. Give Jesus the vision of the floor. Hello, what is your name? Where are you from? And tell us your testimony. Jesus, my name. My name is Uyata Reese. I'm from Grace Lane. Saturday, I came for a conference in the evening. I was at the back there, but daddy, I 
As we were praying, Daddy made a declaration say, anything, anybody took from you today, you will get it. And I grabbed onto that word. But before then, I went to a church and they told me that I gave my clothes to someone. The man was saying, you always gave me things from I said, yes. He said, but the clothes you gave up, the person you gave it to, not the person I took it, but somebody from the person cut this or a place in the wall. He said, for that reason, you keep getting sick, small, small. I said, it's true, true. He said, but if you go through the day when you'll be okay, and the woman of God said, I should get some material and some money so she can go through my day when. I said, but the grace that I honor, it will not let me down. That person will bring it back. I, Saturday night when I went to bed, after everything I went to bed, I was sleeping in there. But I heard a big sound, the person came with force in my sleep. And we punch your clothes and get rid of me and ask me, say, that thing for you, I say, yes. Say, you show everything for you, I say, yes. Yeah. And the person chunk it on me with frustration. And they turn their back, they left. They were going, they started waving to me. And I got out, I sat on the bed, I say, glory be to God for my deliverance. So I have come back to turn all glory to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord for her deliverance. I believe that the good God from this house is about to deliver you and give you a sure testimony. Celebrate the goodness of God from this house. Hello, what is your name? Where are you from? And tell us your testimony. My name is Victoria Lee. I'm from Corner West Community, Nukuta. I've been sick. Off and on, off and on. But it was on a Wednesday, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I told my daughter, I said, I'm not feeling fine. And I started vomiting me out of me. So my daughter told me, say, oh, go. Let me put water on the fire so you can tell about when they break. Then you will go to the hospital in the morning. Went in the bathroom to take bath. Before I make up my mind, the horse was full. My daughter started crying, Mama, oh, Mama, da, oh, Mama, da, oh. So they took me and carried me to Muslim clinic. From there, I came. That Sunday morning when I came, at least I put my spoon on the uh, Facebook live I listened to the apostle preaching that word touched me that word touched me when the pastor started preaching oh I was touched I started crying I said I will come to give my testimony in apostle Kuruma church so they go on Sunday I was here I came here the Sunday. So when I went to the testimony board, they, they go close. Then I started crying. I said, Hey, God, why you don't why you do to me so? But God had a great testimony that I will come stand here to give. When the pastor was preaching the Gong Sunday, he said everybody should take all their their uh, uh, everybody foot should be on the ground. Yeah, they, my foot. I couldn't walk. I can't even touch their foot. Their foot, I couldn't touch it. I prayed to come. So when he made that declaration, say anybody who's sick, you will not go back to sin. My word is God. You brought me here. And you know the reason why I came here. By your stripes. I am healed. The water started leaking from all of their foot. The water started leaking. The water, the water, the water, the water. Hear me here today. I came to get the, I came to tell God, thank you. I came to tell the God of Yeshua, thank you for what he has done on this best land. Oh, I just want to say thank you to the Almighty God. Clap for Jesus. Mama could not walk. Hallelujah. She only. Look at that. People will tell her to come outside. But after the declaration, 
to walk on the ground. Immediately she placed her legs on the ground. The fold burst open. And every pause that was causing her not to walk came outside. And to the glory of God, Mama is walking. Gave Jesus a big hand of applause. Clap for Jesus for her testimony. Well, believe in God. And I want to assure you that you are here and you are not going back the same. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so much so that I said to you the last time, on the platform of belief, possibility is shown. Now, what belief want you to do is that you should always be constant. Don't change. Don't change. When you are constant in something, something has to happen. The man of God yes, spoke to you literally about the nothing. And there is something you should understand. Bible says in Acts 10, it's how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. With the Holy Ghost and with power. What the word power mean? That word power from the Greek word is sousia. Meaning the ability to perform. The ability to do something. The ability to function. When you have power, you can function. Any man with all power. Psalm 1103 says, In the days of power, the people shall be willing. When you lack power, you lack ability. When you lack power, it is, listen, one of the things that you should be afraid of as a man, refuse to lose power. Any phone with all power, that phone is a calculator. Working with foam, working with foam with all current. That means that foam is just in your hand, but it cannot receive call. Many of you here are not receiving call because you lack power. Something that bad for me. I understand that Jesus was called. Jesus was 100% called. But what the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. Now, man of the Holy Ghost, he could not function. So when he was born, he was born as Jesus. But when the anointing came upon him, he became the Christ. So what they stay him, what made him different was the anointing on his life. So if you refuse to understand that what you need in life, you don't need money, you don't need car, you don't need shoe, but you need the anointing. Why? Because the anointing attracts those things on your life. With the Holy Ghost and with power. So there is a difference between the anointing and the Holy Ghost. The power, they say, they say three things there. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with our power. So there is a difference there. A lot of people feel the oil is the anointing. No, the oil is a symbol. We got something in theology we call typology. says to you, I see the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus like a dove. Now, the Holy Spirit is not dove, but they are using the Holy Spirit, the, the dove, as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So I always see Pentecostal taking the bird and putting it over the church, putting it on the symbol and linking that the dove is the Holy Spirit. No, the dove is not Holy Spirit. The dove is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. So, in typology, they use the oil. Now, the oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. So, when you see the oil, what the oil need? The oil need power. So, there is a difference between the anointing and the anointed. The anointing is a carrier of the anointed. I'm always practical. Making you to understand something. If you, if you look at people who face the sour milk, something that makes the milk sour, they will keep a balance of the milk. That balance of the milk that is kept, it is what they will take 
and put into the milk. So because of the mixture of that milk, it changes to what sour milk. So understand this. What makes your life to be sweet? It is not because you are fine. It is not I use that word fine because in Liberia we learn to use that word fine girl. Listen, a guy came from Guinea in Liberia. So everybody called him fine boy. So he went back to Guinea. He said, I found oh, everybody called him. All of us say, show sure, in Liberia, we always call people fine boy. Fine boy, not me, you fine. But it's an illustration of people. So, when you are mixed with the anointing, it makes you fine. So you find out that you are beautiful, you can't get married. But one ugly gets out, you getting married. Look, there's something happening. Don't look at me in the dark. Something that is mixed with your life. Something that is mixed with your life. So, when the anointing comes in your life, it makes your life. Now, those that hate you are compulsory to like you. Luke 4, 14. And Jesus, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and his theme. Listen. 2008, God called the apostle into a very small bus. Now, the bus was the location. But the direction that God was sending, it was different from the location. You may have been found in a, in a small place, but you don't belong in that small place. So, what preferred your time, you must understand there is time and season. So, Jesus said to his mother, he said, my time has not come. Why? The time has not come because the anointing has not come. It is not possible. I see people, they want to eat the cross before the rest. It is not possible. The rest, the rest is always over the cross. So, you must eat the rest before you eat the cross. So, understand that you must be processed. If you are not processed, you cannot eat your recess. The process will always come before the recess. Why I use process and recess? It is not possible. When I was in, when I was in the military, elementary, our father looked at our gracie. My father was an ex military man. So he don't judge by anything. He look at your gracie. When you don't have the hard grade, he gave you small recess. So we are talking about process. You have to be processed. So how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. So why is Jesus to be processed? He was God. He had all power to come down and function. But he never came down. He waited for the process. Say be processed. Say be processed. So the anointing process your life. It makes you the real person you are. When the foam, when the foam comes from the broad, when the foam comes from the broad, the foam, not, not all foam that comes from the broad, it can just function in a bureau. There are foam that need to be decoded. There are foam that need to be what? Decoded. So, when you are not processed, that means you are not decoded. So, what decodes you? 
the anointing, it opens you, it gives you a free flow to life. Our father illustrated it last, I think, three years ago. He said, When you lack oil, you experience what? Stickiness. Who, who own a car here? Who is the owner of a car? Who owns a car? Okay. A bad circle, when there is no oil on the team, what happened? You find out that that team, oil is important. People lack oil today. So they are crying. Why? I'm educated. I have all the ideas. I have all the wisdom. Why? I prophesy over your life today. I speak over your life today. I say this word over your life today. Everything that is sticking over your life, by the time this anointing hits you, God is about to change your life. Now, something you should know about. I illustrated something, but there are people that mix the milk and don't know the mixture to face the milk. So, when they mix the milk, you eat the milk, but you cannot see the taste of the milk. There are also the man of God that hate the oil, and the power that hate the oil cannot change your life. I told somebody last time, I said, your hair is not airport. Anywhere you go, you just show your head. Show your head. Your head is not air put for oil to just be landing on it. No, who put oil on your head? Anywhere you go, people will lay on your head. Listen. That wall laying on her hand. He said, Timothy, he said, he said, stay up the gate by the laying on of hand. When there is a laying of a hand, there is a transfer of the anointing on the person. Which kind of anointing are you carrying now? Which kind of anointing are you carrying? Yeah. You understand that? So, you should be sent. Listen. I said that to my man of God in the last time we were discussing. I said, man of God, there are three spirits that you have as a man of God when you're not having a son. As soon as I'm not having somebody, I go back to my plumber where. If you can't see vision, if you can't dream, if you can't discern, reason. So God me you with everything. Give to you to descend in your place. But whenever you appear to a place, anybody that says shoulder bara bara shoulder bara bara shoulder bara bara, you get your head. They lay hand on your head. So now, because you are getting your head, listen. You know what the head. The head is a carrier. The head is a machine. The head is a CPU that controls the body. Can I show you the monitor? Your monitor is the eyes. So one place you should be very careful of is your head. So people today they just lay hand on you. So send the feeling lay hand on you. You just crazy. You just let it. You just let it. You just let it. Your largest usher down. Oh yeah, I have never seen before a mechanic open the car boot. The mechanic always go and open the car, the head of the car, and check inside it. Why? Listen, I have never seen that in the car, in the driver. As soon you see the car, you sit down there, it will slap your back. Because it's the, it's the control. 
when Jawa can slap people for saying out the car hey, then why you can't slap somebody for laying on your head like that? Am I making sense? And I'm supposed to be like that. Not everybody that taught you. Our father said it the last time. Not everybody. Not everybody. That can affect your life. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that has made your life to go contrary from where God planned for you. Today, that contract is terminated in the name of Jesus. Yes. Listen. The reason why you should be very careful. They talk about a girl, a dancer girl. Who used the spirit of our defamation. And she prophesied well. They say everything you said, it was what? Shoot. But one day, one day, one day, she told that to Paul. And the Bible says she was exposed. God will expose every evil in wrong direction. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, it must sound talk, but it's real. Your head is not airful. There are people you will understand. Let me just transfer this from people laying on your head. There are people not supposed to even ply your head. When people plies your hair, what happens? They are laying their hand on your head. Now, when they lay hand on your head, they are power they transfer. Menisa and Ephraim. Menisa and Ephraim. Esau and Jacob. They are children. Menisa and Ephraim was a grandson of Jacob that was born in Egypt by Joseph. Now, what happened to Joseph and Esau and Jacob? Their father laid their hands on them. And there was a transfer of spirit. Now, when Jacob got old, he went to Egypt. Now, in the process of transferring, because he, Joseph was already blessed. So, what he did, he adopted many signs in Ephraim. So, to transfer the blessing of Jacob, to, to, of Joseph, to his children. So, the Bible says he took his hand and crossed his hand the same way. So, the hands is the transfer. Not everybody. Clap for Jesus. So the man of God, our father, is about to anoint you. And understand, you have to put value. Say value. Say value. Anything that you don't value, it can't work for you. Value. It's important to put value. I will discuss that one by one. That word. But let me just hear the first one. The word value is start with the word V. That word V means VAR. The word VAR is promised me to open. When you open VAR, when you open VAR, what happens? Water falls to leak. So if you lack that V in your life, you love value. Nothing can open. When you value that person, what happens? They open up to you. When you value them, when you value your husband, you open up to you. If he, he will forget, he will forget and get a whole salary to you. Sometimes he will forget and get a whole salary to you. Then you go ask a partner for a pay. That value can do it. Value. Sometimes the 
a man of God. Sometimes when you meet man of God, they can't want to pray for you. They can't want to touch you. Sometimes they tire. But because of the value, they will say, hey, my daughter. Elijah said, you are half for a hearty. However, it was half. But because of the value, Elijah was forced to open the reservoir of anointing. Value. People lack value. Coming for the anointing oil, we have to be directing you. Take the hit up on your head and you get it. Value. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hand for the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Stand on your feet. One minute. Let's take this prayer. Hurry. Say, Father. Say, in the name of Jesus. Whatever that belongs to me. That has been stored on for me. I will cover it in this service. Listen to me. Now let me say you. Or just listen.
Pimba e non può passare a Tolu Ah! I am one of them Hey! This is not in where Jesus don't say Ah! E non può passare Pimba e non può passare a Tolu I am one of them Say! I am Ah! Ah! Where Jesus don't E non può passare E non può passare E non può passare a Tolu Yeah! This now! Hey! I am one of them, hey, there's a nothing where Jesus don't say, ha, 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 it don't go past me, it don't go past me at all, no, I am one of them, hey, there's a nothing, it don't go past me, hey, I am one of them, there's a nothing where Jesus don't say, ha, 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 e non può passare, e non può passare a tutto Ah, I am on the number When they cause we five Hey, we know for December Until we see Jesus taking over Hey, I am on the number Hey, when they cause we five Hey, we know for December Until we see Jesus taking over I am on the number Cause we vibe, we have the force say We know for December until we see Jesus taking off We are the, we are the new generation God is raising time for one of you Fire, fire, fire also People are one of Jesus New generation Hey, God is raising Fire, what the love People are one of you I am one of them. There's a nothing where Jesus don't say, Hey, he don't go past me. He don't go past me. Clap your hand for Jesus. Amen. All right. Let's just get this. Can you hear me there? Are you sure? Okay. Let's just get this information. We have an outreach. By the grace of God, next month, in April. Now, I want to take my time to say
35. The Bible says, and he, and he said, do not not hard up, put off the shoes from off the feet. For the place where on thou standest is what? A holy ground. I want, to, I want to talk to you on the topic that is titled, the place where you are standing. Tell your neighbor, say the place where you are standing. Say it again. Say the place where you are standing. Now, listen to me. Let's get this point quickly. We can run through. Number one, where you are standing gives you advantage or give advantage to you. Where you are standing give advantage to you or give advantage to your problem or to your enemies. Where you are standing give advantage to you, give advantage to your enemy, or give advantage to your problem. In Psalm 92, Papi, I beg you, please. In Psalm 92, verse 13. Psalm 92, verse 13. The Bible says, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the coat of our God. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our Lord or our God. So, we, we, we are obligated to be planted. And the place where you are planted determines your flourishing. So, the reflections of your life or the beautification of your life is determining or an objective is where you are being planted. Where you are planted, where you stand, Maro Solad. Give us another translation so we can see faster. Another translation. The Bible says, and they are a tree that someone planted in the house of the Lord. They grow really well. Near the temple of the Lord, they grow. When they are planted in the house of God, they grow. So lack of growth indicates or lack of growth is where you are planted. For better translation, if you are not growing, you are not improving where you stand, matter so lot. So where you are planted, determine how fast you're going to grow or how slow you're going to grow or how high you're going to grow. So every one of us here see that Christianity has become a different thing. It has become a place where people go to display talent. So a lot of people around the things of God but does not look like the things of God. And a lot of people around God are not reflecting the beauty of God. Reason, because we are good at saying it. We are very good at talking it. Very good at preaching maybe stories. But you see, the greatest enemies of men is not the devil. The greatest enemy of men is not witchcraft. From the Caribbean, the late great Max Maroon said, the enemy of men is ignorance. When a man don't know what he's supposed to know, no matter how high he grows in height, he becomes limited in life. So one of the biggest problems people have with communicate, I mean, with Pentecostals, Pentecostals are people who say or claim that they have the Holy Spirit. And because they have the Holy Spirit, they don't believe in knowledge. Holy Spirit gives them zeal. So they believe in zeal, the knowledge. Paul said in Romans chapter 10, if you start verse 2 and 3, he said, My prayer for Israel, he said that they, he said, I bear record that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. What is knowledge? It's not just a word. Knowledge is your ability or the ability to be in the know. Lack of knowledge, it means that you are not in the know. Knowledge to me, awareness. To be aware. To put your conscience or your side conscience into awareness. No matter how powerful you are in prayers. 
No matter how strong you are in prayers, what most strengthens your prayer is the ability to promote knowledge. Because the knowledge of the word of God empower the outcome of the word of God. Whenever a man is a knowledge of God's word, they become very confident of the God that spoke the word. A lot of people are Christian but lack confidence. A lot of people fast and pray but they lack confidence. A great man said, when you pray to God, if God answered you with money, then he don't like you. Whenever you pray to God, especially in Christianity, he said, one of the most lazy religions in the world are Christians. But Christians are one of the most powerful people, like the Jews. A very good innovator. They are very good in bringing things into existence. But in Christianity, laziness is actually a, 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 a priority. Why have I said so? Reason is very simple. Now, he said when you pray to God, how many of you know, how many of you have ever recognized that? The more you pray, the more your knowledge advances in God. The more you pray to God, the more your wisdom advances in God. If you are fasting and praying, and only looking up to 150, somebody say you. 200, somebody say you. So then a door that open for you, and you pass through. No. Anytime you fast and pray, what happened? God makes you excellent. He makes you wise. God gives you wisdom. Wisdom gives you the ability to generate forms. It gives you the ability to generate your You see, you become creative by being wise. So if God legitimately want to bless you, what does he do for you? He makes you wise. God prefer to make you wise so that you can have the ability even when you lost everything you can still recreate all the things you lost because nothing is as permanent in this illegal world nothing people lost things that they take time to raise for 10 years 25 years they lost them in one day but once you have lost the knowledge or not lost the wisdom or what you have been in power way all that you lost in the physical can still be regained once the knowledge is still available clap your hand for Jesus, amen that is why you see, one thing of the Jews the Jews are very, very wise people the Bible says, and God make David wise than the enemy and David behaved wisely before Saul. Because in our generation now, it takes people who are spiritually connected to understand what God is communicating to their spirit. Because to assess, to settle, to rise. In our generation, you as a person, you have to be very very brain exercising. If you are not ready to put your brain to work, stop bothering the God we serve. Because for you to live, for you to survive, for you to have substance, that is why people say one of the most lazy religion are Christian, but with God they are powerful people. Are you hear what I say? Yes, the point here is they have what to do but they don't put what they have into use. So for that purpose they are waiting for manna to come from heaven. God should bring them manna. God should turn the bitter water into sweet water. So Max Maroon said Christians like miracles. Miracles is good. Miracle is simply means the, the sudden, all of a sudden, I will, I mean, I gave up and I told my back I was going, but all of a sudden, 
I just found 150. That's a Christian miraculous mentality. But Daniel coming from out of the den of the lion, that was a miracle of God. It was not urgent. No. Such a mission on the burning goal, escaping the fire, that was the miracle of God. But the miracle of eating food is the advanced knowledge God gave to you. So, child of God, have it at the back of your mind. Where you are standing gives you advantage over your problems or it gives you advantage over your enemy. If you are here, say, I hear you. Amen. One more time again, say, I hear you, sir. Amen. So, the place where you are standing determines what you are able to stand in life. Where you are standing determines what you are able to stand in life. If you are standing on a broken bridge, you can face your hand to fight. Because you know, if you are standing on a very slumber in a muddy place that is not suitable to hold the grips on your leg, you can stand there being insulting someone and say you will run. Because you try to run, you will slip. So where you stand, determine what you can stand in life. I'm not going to somebody yet. Now, why did I say so? The reason being is because a lot of us see that here this evening. I will be getting these things. Are you here? If you are here, say, I hear you. Now, you're going down or you're staying up is defined and described by the place where you stand. So have that at the back of your mind. If you remain standing or you remain up, it depends on where you are standing. If you go down in life, it also depends on where you are standing. Reason for raising up or, or taking us to the top in life, wherever a person stands in life, it gives them edge, it gives them opportunity, it gives them place, it gives them advantage. Depends on where you are standing. So in life, your stands matters a lot. Your stance matters a lot. So, if I will go down, depends on where I'm standing. If I will stand up, depends on where I'm standing. In Exodus 33, if we start of verse 21, Exodus 33, verse 21. The Bible says, and the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon the rock. There is a place by me. Stand upon the rock for what experience? Watch this now in the next verse. And it shall come to pass, why my glory pass by, that I may put thee in the calf of the rod, and I will cover thee with my hands. And why I pass, the next verse, and I will take away my hands, and thou shalt see my bad path, but my face shall not be seen. God was speaking to Moses. So, why, why, why does it say that it is actually necessary for Moses to come up to the rock? That means that as long Moses remained below the rock, he can experience the glory of God or see the manifestations of God. But God have to draw coffee call it or God have to strategically tell Moses to stand in a right location in order to access the glory. So Moses left the ground and he came up to the rock. Now, not just the rock, but he claims the mountain. When he got on the mountain, to me, I thought that was a good height to interact with the Lord. That's a good height to see the Lord. But the Lord said now, even though you are up the mountain, but leave the mountain and then you come up on the rock and stands on the rock. And then you will get access so a torch for me. So Moses left the mountain and stood on the rock. So standing on the rock, the rock there express God in the picture. In the man that stands on God, it is not too easy for your enemy to pull you down. Look at the people here this evening. I don't know what are they sleeping or they're ready paying attention. Now, what they very carefully. 
Reason B is because in our generation, there are too many things. I told you earlier, where you stand determines how many things you can stand. And how many things you can withstand in times of trouble. Because we live in the days where there are different kinds of winds, storms, waters. They come symbolically in the form of challenges. So if you are standing on the rock, what do water can do to the rock? My God. Am I talking to somebody here? Now watch that very carefully. In the mighty gospel, if you start in the seventh chapter, in the 24 verse, mighty chapter 7, verse 24, he said, Therefore, whosoever hear this saying of mine, and toward them, I will lack, I will lack in him unto a wise man, <laughs> which built his house upon the rock. Now, you are a wise man, you can stand in the trouble if you build your house upon the rock. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people have built their house on the sand. Before you build your house, you got to be conscious of the days and the time. There are certain locations. You can build certain story building. You can be aware of the winds. Because when the wind comes in this anger, they have the capacity to root up that belly and to root up the foundation. But the Bible said, Jesus said, and the one that yet is saying, and do them, what will happen? He said, which is a be a wise man, which built his house upon the rock. The next verse, please, I beg you. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. Whoever that put their house on the rock, the first thing is that the rain will descend. Ladies and gentlemen, the rain in that content explain a time in life there is an unexpected multiple problems. Rain don't fall in alone. It comes by group. You can't come there before you made up your mind. A thousand of rain can touch you in less than one second. So at time problem we are not prepared for they come in so many ways but ladies and gentlemen when you are standing on the solid rock the rock that is higher than you stronger than you bigger than you tougher than you no matter how the rain come it will bounce on the rock and go back that is the reason why that a lot of us we are bent through the storms bent through the rain bent through the challenge and yet we are still standing why? Because you are standing on the rock. I pray for someone here today. If I hear your amen, I put you on the rock. That's your amen. It's not too good at all. Say, I received that. I want to hear the microphone again. Sit down. Say, I hear you, sir. Are you here? Watch this very carefully. <laughs> he said the rain will descend. He said the floor will come. He said the wind will blow. He said and it will beat the house and it will not fall. Why? Because the house is built on the rock. For it was founded upon the rock. Once we are founded upon the rock, the challenges will come in their numbers. The peace will come in their numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, a rain will only help to dust up the rock. A rain will help up to wipe us to snap from the rock. But it can beat up the rock. A storm will come in all his might. But it can never lift up the rock. That is why a storm has come for some of us in our dark days, in our powerless days. But yet God kept you. Why? Because you are planted on the rock. I bring you to the consciousness of the solid rock. Christ, that rock that we standing on. We are in the moment in the days where things are getting better, harder, tougher. But once you are standing on the rock, no matter how many times the storm blow, that storm will not take you away. Everywhere you hear me from, let your amen sound better than that. I don't like that your amen at all. <laughs> Shout, say, I'm standing on the rock. 
Are you here? Ask your neighbor, say, where are you standing? Say it again, say, where are you standing? Alright, now watch this. Watch this. Okay. Let me end the verse and show you something. Then we'll go further from here. Can you give me the next side of it? Is there everyone that you ever do saying of mine and do them shall be likened unto a foolish man. Everyone I hear this saying, and don't do them rather, shall be like the foolish man. Which build his house upon the sand. Symbolically speaking, dramatically display as concerning or pertaining the sand. You see, there are a few things about the sand. The sand does not have the capacity to stabilize your feet. When you step on the beach, your grip on your feet is not powerful enough. So anytime you step on the sand, you find out it's trying to leave your feet. Number one, indication of the sand. Number two, the sand always sink. As soon as you step on the sand, it feel like going down. So, if you feel your feet going down, then that means you are stepping on the sand. So you can't be on the sand and I be on the hard ground and our growth be the same. Once you are in the sand and I'm on the rock, in the sand, every meaning what happened to you is that you are tossing to go down. In the sand, every time you lift up your foot, something go down. You lift up your foot or your feet, something will go down. But on the rock, you are constant, you are stable, nothing shaking, you are always standing. But now on the sand, the sand disadvantages you for so many things. So, many of us that are sitting here, the place where you are standing could be the reason of your multiple problem today. The place where you are standing. I was standing this thing next week on Friday because we'll do a little editing on the sound. I, I, I'll tell you better than that. Because right now I'm not too good. But the good news here is the place where you stand or the place where you are standing it, play, it plays a major role of what you are able to see or what able to access you. Once you are standing in the sand or in the mother place you know that a lot of us sort of linking this now to, to the types of family. A lot of us are from. Some of us are from a modern family. You can be standing in that kind of family and you are expecting yourself to go fast. When you are standing in mud, the first thing you hear, every time you lift up your foes or your feet and put it again, it will go down. That is why most of us, no matter what we do, we go down in everything we do. But tonight, I pray for you. And then where I hear your amen, your feet will not go down again. That your amen is not better at all. If I hear amen, your feet will not go down again. Shall I say where I'm standing? Go and change my location tonight. Are you here? My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. So, if you are standing on the sand, what happened? The rain will come, the storm will come, different things will come, and it won't stand you. You will not be able to stand anything. I know they will happen to you. You go down. Am I not somebody yet? My God, today, anywhere you are standing, that is reducing you, that is causing problems for you, anywhere you are standing, that life seems to be so hard for you today. God is about to relocate someone. In the way you say amen, God will relocate you now. Tell your neighbor, say that place you're standing is the cause for the problem you're going through. Holy Ghost fire. Say fire. Say fire. Are you here? Where you standing, tell me what you possess. Joshua 1, 3 to 5. 
He said, whatsoever the souls or every place that the soles of your feet shall tray. He said, that place belongs to you. Everywhere the soles of your feet shall tray. He said, that place is your possession. So anywhere you step your feet, what happened to you? He said, that place belongs to you. So now, I just want to lay the foundation. Where we stand as people, because some of you, no matter how they preach to you, you don't understand nothing. But listen very carefully. I know you understand it one. Now, where you stand, it plays a major role. In Exodus 35, God said, Moses, I want you to come a little bit closer. When Moses came to where he saw the bush on fire, the Bible says, when Moses saw the bush on fire, he turned to see. When he came close to see, the Bible said he saw the bush burning, but it was not consumed. A voice spoke out of the bush and said to him, Moses, Moses. And he said, yes, sir. He said, take up your shoes. In other words, Moses, for the place where you are standing, he said, this place is the holy ground. The place where you are standing, the place is the holy ground. So, why should Moses take up a shoe? Because the place is the holy ground. If the place was not the holy ground, Moses has stepped into other places. He has been into other places. He has gone to other locations. But God said, Moses, where you enter, the territory you enter, will give me lifetime advantage. So where you are standing is a different place. So ladies and gentlemen, Moses was a wanderer. In other words, he was wandering in the wilderness because the Egyptians were haunting him. Pharaoh wanted to kill him. He has killed the Egyptian and he fled into the wilderness. So they were looking for him. There's a shepherd boy or a shepherd man or a man who takes care of animals. But all of a sudden, when he got to a place called the mountain of God, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, where you stand, they place the holy ground. Ladies and gentlemen, what gave Moses a turnaround for life, a change for life, was coming to have an encounter with a place that a feet has never stood before. Listen to me. In life, you are either on high, depends on where you are standing, or you are on a trap, depends on where you are also standing. I'm not somebody yet. But the good news here is the Lord said, Take up your shoes. Let me explain it to you there. There are certain family or there are certain backgrounds that when the person comes from, what happened? Because you came from that background, every year you go naked. When I say naked, I mean empty. That a place you step, you start losing your shoes. You start losing your money. You start losing your identity. You start losing everything. Listen to me. Everywhere your two legs has entered. It was a graveyard and you knew nothing about it. Today I am here to tell you. Get ready for repositioning. If I hear your amen, God will reposition you. This week shall be a reposition week for you. That your amen is not good at all. Are you here? If you just say, I hear you. Now watch this. There are places you are committed to stand. Nobody stand you once you stand in a place. Nobody can stand you. The importance of where you stand and nobody stands you, there is a place. In life, life is combat. If you are not aware of combat, you are a ghost. But to succeed in our time, you got to be hulu hulu. The word hulu hulu simply means it's an attach. You got to be a little bit aggressive. You got to be uh, 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 demonically aware. aware. Be aware that there are powers. There are witches. There are forces. As a man, as a woman, as an institution, they won't easily allow you to survive. So the place where you go to stand matters a lot. There are many of us here, the people that fighting you, 
There are places they have committed themselves to. They go there every night and stand before they sleep. There are people commit themselves to swine, to banana bush, to, 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 to plum um, uh, bush. They go there every night, stand there for three hours, two hours. They are the one projecting evil. So, child of God, be aware where you stand, determine the days you stand. You can't stand nothing if you are not standing in the right place. The place you stand determine what you can stand. People are standing into court, into high places, into diabolical places, just to pull some of us down, just to destroy some of us life. But child of God, where your two feet are planted, no matter where they stand, if where you stand is higher than where they stand, no matter how they try, they will not stand in you. Oh, you hear me? If you hear me, your amen come louder than that. Are you here? Now watch this. In Joshua chapter 1, in verse 3, he said, wherever the soles of your feet shall tread, that place belongs to you. In verse 5, he said, all the days of your life, there shall be no man to stand before you. All the days of your life, there shall be no man to stand you or to stand before you. You can have your feet planted on the rock of God and men, men, God in very say men, 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 men. Who is men enemy? Men. Who is men enemy? Men, 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 men. There shall be no men to stand you. There are people that are intent. They are they are, they are vowed not to go nowhere in life, not to do nothing. So they are lay in wait just to destroy other people who are made tireless effort. That is why who you trust, your friendship will matter. Who you trust, relationship will matter. Because there are people standing in front of people as us to go to life, blocking them that you as long as I'm alive, crossing to go beyond you, just forget about it. But God said, as you stand in my house, there shall be no man to stand before all the days of your life I may pronounce that to some of you every man or woman that's standing before you for your sake they are going down tonight that's your amen is not correct at all you say amen to go down for your sake they go down for your sake tell your neighbor say the place you're standing be committed to that place are you here Genesis 18, 22. Genesis 18, 22. The Bible says, And the men turned their face from trains and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood ye before the Lord. The time come you don't move. A time come, you don't shake. A time come, you don't take any risks until you stand before God. You see, let me teach you spirituality. Because if you are ignorant of that, it is easy for you to be conquered by your enemies or by forces or by the devil. Of this end time or the last days. Because we live in a very reckless time. Time where human value loss. Anybody can kill anybody for anything. Uh -huh. So here we go. Watch this very carefully. He said. And Abraham. Stood before the Lord. A man who stands before God. Day, night, evening. You know everything about God to the ungodly, a stupid thing. Every activity about God to those who don't believe the God you believe in is like a foolish thing. Everything we do in a church, you see, when I see people, the same said Christians. The radical, all oh, the people who live their life down in the faith. And taught other people how to serve God. 
They have created content from the government. They have created content. They have used the government to create content. They have used parliament, senate, representative, musicians. Now it's God. If you're looking for somebody to tell you, say, just one day coming, well, you get a long time to wait. A generation where a pastor will preach today and somebody will go and cut it and turn it to phone. What did Lee again? Everything about God. In fact, for us, we is sad. It's done to be afraid of. We live in the world, we're kidding one another. That's not a bad thing. If you come in, you will catch me or you miss me, I will catch you. But the truth here is, some of you, the, the, the thing here is, if you look at the society we're in now, especially African females, if you really get human feeling, you will minimize bony. I'll be very with you. See what, what are you born in child for? Look at the society we're living in. For a reason. In Africa today, 96% of parents are victims of children. All of the territory they're born. They, when they want to we are useless now. They put a parent in a wish position. I want my eating, I want star. A generation, a generation, so you, so you put your phone down, they won't take it. And as they open, they want to go. And you can't have these things for showing. It's everywhere. It's a movie you so love them to the stand where all kind of nonsense. You tell them, your phone now, good phone, you say, Mama, not let me. Don't hold phone for now. Why? Because most of the things you see in Africa, there are things being copied. They all. An era where respect for God fade away. All the fathers who have given their life for the gospel, they insulted being cheap, very cheap. Nobody you have a cost. You cost TGJs. You cost Benin. You cost. You, you, you cost everybody. No fear at all. They want to say no born children. You want born child because you want child. You want your foreign looking at the fire. You can't say that one play. Those of you with a female, the pink out of enter inside you. Yeah, I want to bomb, but the bone is good. But look at the story we living in. The vulnerability. Very vulnerable. You see, you see a mother take a child and tell the child to bend her back. She, the child will be bending her back and she's recalling it. Ain't worth laughing. How many years old? Three years old. Then the mom tell her, say, break your back. Then she's breaking her back. Breaking her back. Breaking her back. That man has eat through her conscience. A mother taking star, star for ungodly people, reckless people. For people who are aluminatics, cutting a star on the child head. Giving the child a very, like Jimmy Kaya. Giving the child raka. Baby, oh, raka, plow the hair, cut it so, leave it so. And it, the child not even know themselves. When you grow up now, it, because we, to do raga, you have to you have to do puff. No, let lead out it, nothing, nothing worth laughing here. Nothing. Hey, you want bone bone male? Bone male grow up. You say you wanted to be sound. If already feel, the child will start cutting the hair at the age of three. You will take the child to the barber shop. You will be the sponsor for that hair. Mama, I left, I left Bon Mali. Then you will cut the Bon Mali. 
You forget to know bone marrow can tell we. And any time, any style, anything you do, you see, the problem here, you are Christian but not spiritual because you know what? Everything we do today, it has a spirit. It has a spirit. You buy a Nicki Minaj clothes for your three-year-old daughter. You buy uh, uh, Rakis clothes. You buy Davido for your son. You go out in the market, you're asking, what Davido sitting on Davido? And you forget to know. You forget to know Davido. When you David Ido. When I want to get big now, is that Davido in you? You take a picture. Masa. I told you in the women's conference, you see, Africa, one of the biggest problems in Africa, we don't have the capacity of three years thinking, five years from now. Who we'll become a child? The person is, the person is uh, let's say, eight, seven years or eight years old. Give him ten years from now. Ten years from now. You are inside. Then you will pull, you pull, they get, they get all the different kind, the different kinds of um, let's say uh, 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 programs. They get more programs. They get this on the channel. You will sit there. That fool will sit down and take remote and put whiskey and you start dancing whiskey. Then you say, you, you, "My son, now dance whiskey." <laughs> the whiskey playing and you, you there to tell you cut it off. If fifteen whiskey spirit enter. 16, you go to school. Where's K? You fold this side. Huh? <laughs> I see you want to say, hey, hey. Sh- shut up there. Spirit has entered. Before you made up your mind, it's stuck, it's stuck coming home. You hear the people. You feel me sitting here and you are the problem. You are the problem. You are, you, are, you, are, you are a serious issue. You are an issue. It's very African. Every week you are born. Every week you are born. You're not married. Somebody not married to you. You own dead. You are born. You woman. You, you not no sako. You not no bodoba. You not no keke. Nothing. Shut up there. Shut up. Stop it. Look at women conference. The other one came to the pulpit. When I say other women come, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Spirit. One is here, one so, one so. Papa, let her cherry. The other one get out. No, stop laughing. No, those of you who are privileged to talk to, let's talk to you. Look at the time. Before you do anything, look at the time. Look at the time. You know, somebody not in, 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 in fact, we don't share this, they're not guaranteed. Nothing guaranteed. Nothing. Nothing should be trusted to that later. What did I say? Shut up there. You will let down, you forget yourself. Totally. No nothing. After everything, to the week. You say, oh, I get one, no. Bang, bang. You know, anything you bang, bang. I'm a hero. <laughs> I said, <laughs> show star. When you have bang, bang, it means show star. You will walk for baby that one money. No, seriously. You see, you see, if you're in a church here, you don't look at things from different perspectives, it's up to you. But if you do things, sit down. Think. Look. See beyond Liberia. Don't see Liberia. See beyond. The country here, the country you're looking at, you can't go sit down, you forget what you said. You can't bring the foolish there. For who? For who now? When you feed the bam bam. <laughs> My son laughing. <laughs> Those days, when I 
that thing happened to a woman. You will see, like, the, okay, the child young, the boy young, the boy run away. But the boy man will come, the sister will come, the pa will come, everybody will come to the next family. Culture gone. Everything, you see, you, got, you, need, you, you, you need to be wise to live now. Culture, everything is respectful. Nothing value again. They will come to the parents. Hello, yeah. Your son, parents will start begging. Parents will go and take. But these days, the parent now of the boys, they crank their foot. As soon as you come, the man will say, that, number one, <laughs> you come again, number two, you come with crying, nothing new. Oh, that Jinyo again. And I tell Jinyo, hey Jinyo, and I tell Jinyo. But you see that thing on Jinyo, bro, you are howling. If you come and show yourself, I come and know you again. But oh, yeah, howling, howling, howling. Now let's have to have you show yourself now. They start playing careless. You see where oh, you are crying? They start playing careless there on you. Then you, you can count the process. No blood medicine. No constant hospital care. No vitamins. No good vitality. No good service. No good care. You say you eat potato green for blood. So you eat potato green dry rest. You are pregnant and you don't even have it to eat. A baby fighting inside you, you you're, you're, you're Roman and fighting you too. You're fighting two different battles. When you finish getting that one, you come to a place. You get breath. The child come out. You feel battle over. But the battle just start fresh. Fresh. School, cancel. Skill, cancel. Everything about you, go down the dream. What next? It's that money, baby. Some of you are preaching here and you are preaching there. If I burn it, I go to the grandma. Can you see your point? I would just kill the people there. I chunk it there. You see your point? It's not about burning there. It's not about giving it to the grandma. But the point here is look at the days. Look at the town we're living in. Don't be friends when you look at the, look at the time. Don't you ready? You, you can feel grief for the children that are coming up. For us who are already inside. What we'll become of the little children? You see, parents who born children 24 seconds, they keep it on the phone. They put the phone on and they call the it on the chest. Then they are sinking, they are sinking. And they do tip, 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 top, tip, top. She didn't tip. What age? She one year. She didn't tip, top. That one will take five years. She starts stealing your food from me and you. Five years. As soon as you take five years, when you come in the room, you see what you're doing Get my food. Where you learn anything from? Who the coach? Now, you tell your phone, anywhere she go, she see phone. She taking it. She open it on. It's not easy, eh? It's not easy. Oh. It's not easy. It's not easy. I will not go far as that. I tell you, you are here, you are on my, on my voice. You are here to be in the generation. You are not wise. You pay your house on sand. No, pay your house on a rock. You got to, you got to can consequence it. Mama tell you story finish. Mama tell you story finish. They say you that will take pregnancy for you to even hear or her. Then you come in too. You come in. You come in. Open the pattern. You say my baby, by you phone Isa. So if you get a bottle, you have for me. Then are you? When you see some young people and the baby. Your cell phone, your, 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 to take it aside, you not even know it. To mind yourself, you not even To bathe yourself, you hear what? What you go, ah? When you ready to start taking my straight, you will not do it anymore, the Father. You start with Son and Holy Spirit. Only the Father can stop to. You do follow, you do follow for almost 13 years. Now you have grown. You're getting big up. You're coming on age. All right. Then you go eat it, baby. 
the, in the morning. <laughs> Tous les mois. In the morning. In the baye, you te baye. So you're telling, you're going to twirl. You're sitting around. <laughs> Stop it, man. Yo, pa. Yo, pa, fully set. In fact, it's the one requesting. Mama, I want to buy. Oh, my friend, if you take him back. Mama said, let me tell you, account. Let me take him back. Let me around two. Let me take him around two. They stay out of two. Twelve. Mama, 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 mama. I mean, oh, 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 oh. You see, we live, we grew up in an environment where we, 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 we knew childhood. Have you seen a way where a child go bathe to the next devil house? Oh, the boy will answer me. Oh, 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 well, well. <laughs> hey, hey, then the child come back. Boom. Then it complete. Mama, I tell you. Mama, I tell you. Then who bath you? Ah. Uh, go where I clone them. Where I clone them? Very careless. Very careless. Let your clothes go wear clothes. You send in one year old child to go wear clothes. Because you're set. Send them bring the money. You hitch in a chair to wake up. You say in the name of the Father, as the mountain surround Jerusalem. So the Lord surround the people. I am on you, 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 you can't move. What thing happened? No. No. I don't be bringing children. I can't be suffering there yet. Now everybody intelligent. Now everybody tell you it's okay. I will stay with you with the child to help you support the child. But look at today. Look at today. You see some child crossing God. Young baby. And make, make you God be on a comedy. Or escape. Telling pastors to escape and actors. You think the generation in a safe? A safe? The generation look like a safe? <laughs> I have a daughter of this church. Every day she will come, apostle, apostle, apostle. I say, leave up. I say, leave up. Apostle, apostle. I say, leave up. Leave up. Leave up. Leave up. Some of you are here now as I'm speaking to you. Hear me. Hear me clear if you haven't heard me before or heard me before. Life is very. You see? Early morning, Kasawali when he sleep, hmm? when he sleep, then Jama, Jama, in fair, ah yeah, they will not know. In 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 fair, care what care, eh? What in here? What a life! When you wake up in the morning, you put that thing on the fire. They will not think it's sweet, eh? Very excellent, very excellent. Very, I said very. Then you can't tell all your appetite. Huh? Eh, 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 say he go, say she go, she come by here. Eh, eh. You the time you go. Oh, you get that one year. In your days, the time you go, you came back. What did I mean? The day you start taking life as the way it go, that you can change certain things, you drop some prayer point. I'm telling you, let me apostle, apostle, uh, hey, 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 anything I'll do, do a child, let it be. You get two responsibility now. Of a child. One, feed them. Two, school them. Three, to change them. Now you are. He left them for eight years. They will lose a role one day. You can change somebody. For what reason? You will not feed and school. Play your part. Feed, school. Oh, my mom making effort to school me. 
Oh, my pa making effort to school me and feed me. But the rest of it, that like God. No, 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 the rest are God. Will they go out? But they become bad? Or they become good? That like God. That like God, oh. Like you, you keep it in the house, you go going nowhere. You go, the day if to frustrate you. Oh, I pray that day, man, I come. Then I talk. So you parents, take it easy. Now, and you who haven't even been planted yet, if you go do family planning, shut up there. Shut up here. We can be dedicating baby every week. We not get food in your country. Look at how. Every week, every week, every week. Every week. <laughs> Never stop. Never stop. <laughs> I consulted a doctor don't go for two arm two arm break up <laughs> yeah yeah that's what you no 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 I'm laughing at you I'll put it my foot down and go home two arm break up it will trip you <laughs> when they went over low when they break up go down you hear that Jimmy Mama, Jimmy will come. When they broke up, go down, Jimmy. You see? You get the analysis zero. I love you in the church. At least see two arms in a trust them. No. But my point to you, as a man of God to you, guide yourself. The little God gave to you, do. Guide yourself. Many people today are young. But if you check in the middle of their hair, everything will get gray. You know why? Early grieving. Early. Very early. Turning around, just grieving. Tango yourself. You see, children? Eh? Children, there is no human standard for childbearing. How many of you know that? No human standard for childbearing. Are you going to say, la, la, la? La main un motive et que no human standard for childbearing. When you born out of well law, what a trophy. When you're not born out of well law, what a trophy. Born la bon. People are born out of well law. That didn't want the law. Born out of well law. Oh my, how do I put it? Okay. People that didn't born out of well law. What do people can call well law? Your mom? Is, am I right? You said, Your mom and pa marry. They born you before they got married. What? What do you have me? Well, 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 well. Where well, love me, your mom and pa marry and born you? Yeah. No, 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 no. Jaya. Your mom and pa marry and they born you. Okay. When you born in, when you born through union, how do they call you? You born to well, all right? When you born and your mom and pa not marry, how do they call you? <laughs> okay. Okay. If you say also child, right? Okay, in case the person married and born another child outside, how do you call a child? Eh? How do you call a child? Okay, alone you marry, you born outside. It's called outside child. Well, like Konoki or Osaki. Well, when you. Wait, stop that. Okay, we can put one on your head so you go. You can meet my face, you won't cry. Listen, yo. when you born, when you born, when you born, hmm? or when you are born, 
Maybe your parents are not married, right? Maybe they exchange vow, right? Your parents never exchange vow and they bond you. They both are not married. How do they call you? You say? So like you call the person pastor, pastor or like vow, which one? The what? That the Lord calling you pastor? Or like a Bible, which one? Okay. Now, what is the different manifestation of the well law, born out of well law and pastor? And what is the different manifestation? Huh? No, 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 wait, wait, bro. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, no, my question here. How do the pastor appear? How do the well law appear? How do they want born out of well law appear? No, 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 no. No, go and do some offer. Wait to listen. They didn't know plow. Okay. When you both are you marry and then you born a child. It's called child born in well law, right? And a two. It's called a child born in well law. That means your parents, both of them was both married. But now listen to me. Do you know that? My point here I'm making to you this evening is that there is no human standard for giving birth to a child. No. No human standard for giving birth to a child. So, like for instance, say, okay, yeah. You see all these things, that are human moral and main protocol. And to our main value, right? Okay, my pa married to my ma, my mom married to my pa, and what about this? Listen to me. So, I want to ask you one question. Jesus, what kind of child? No, no, you are. I... Finish some of on your head so you can go home. Okay. Jesus, what kind of child? You say? Wait. Wait. Listen to me. Hold it there. Give me one minute. I make a point. Church, please appeal for your audience. Give me one minute. I make a point, right? The point, listen, John, man, John, man, let's see. Oh, wait, one minute. The point I make here is this, right? We got, there is no standard for coming on the face of the earth, right? Before I formed you, he said, I knew your man. He said, I knew you. Before you came into the womb, I already ordained you. As a prophet to a nation, right? All right, now watch this. Because so many things killing people in our generation, men make laws that are not godly back and godly supported. Now, listen very carefully, right? How many of you know that Jesus, Mother Mary, was engaged to Joseph? And they were planning on marrying because both of them was engaged. Are you aware of that? Okay, in the process of the engagement, right? They were not yet married. Why God couldn't wait for Joseph to marry Mary before the born Jesus? Listen very carefully. Mary hasn't born no child before. Not, she hasn't had child experience, none at all. She was a virgin in Israel. Right? But she was about to get married. Isaac, 
there were other virgins in Israel who were not yet engaged to anybody. Why God couldn't use them? Why God couldn't go to them and say, you, Mary already engaged to someone, right? But then, let me find someone who is not engaged to no one. She didn't get no attachment. She's a complete virgin. Let me wait. But Mary was about to marry to Joseph. And Joseph talked to her for a wife. Joseph hired her for a wife. Now the truth here is, Joseph was just a day away to marry Mary. Mary walked to Joseph in the afternoon and said, Sir, I'm pregnant. Mary, okay, I think to her, listen to me. Why don't you do sex before marrying? That two of your agreement. Why don't you don't do sex before marrying? That two of your agreement. Okay, that thing, we're not part of us until we marry. That thing, we'll do it before we get married. That two of your agreement. All right. Joseph, I have a child. You have what? A child. Okay, you have a child. Say yes. So I cannot do something. I can't, I can't accept it again. God said to Joseph, take Mary as your wife. Yes, For the child she had is mine. So God went behind Joseph's wife and impregnated Joseph's wife and asking Joseph Luke 135 Luke 135 34 Like about 34 Hold it there Hold it there one minute I'm out of here Hold it there Then said Mary unto the angel How shall this be? See, I know no man. Give her 30. 30 or 34 be okay for us. Okay, 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou have found favor with God. So that means God sent the angel to approach Mary for him. What is that? Translate. 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 All right, thank you. Let's see. Watch now. Let me, let me explain to you. Do not be afraid, Mary. Gabriel went on to say, God has been kind to you. In that verse. Give a different one, rather. But I enjoy a show her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise. God has a surprise for you. Give her the next verse. What is the surprise? No, the next verse now, 31 yet. He said, You will be pregnant. Contradiction. Conflict. Can God bring conflict into a marriage? He that found a wife. Find out a good thing and shall obtain favor, not disgrace. You will be pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name what? Jesus. He will be great because son of the most high, the Lord God, the Lord God will, will give him the throne of his father David. <laughs> he will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. <laughs> Mary said to the angel, but how? Man business, and I don't know it. I'm engaged to a person. So getting pregnant outside the engagement. A trouble. 
So how possible can this be? There is no God land for human manifestation. You see the world we're living in? We just have to condemn people. We can reduce to look better. That, oh, oh that, that boy is well Lord. That man is pastor. That one is there. That one is there. Well Lord, pastor, trauma, trauma door. No matter what. When greatness on your head. The womb, the womb is a privilege. The womb. The womb is just a privilege. The womb. If you believe the Bible, here we go, right? He said, but how? He said, I have never slept with men before. Give me the next verse for me. Then answer, then in your answer, the whole Holy Spirit, you too? Holy Spirit? You see the people coming in Gish. Then you go break their marriage. Holy Spirit? <laughs> the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest. What you can do, the lower, when the highest is manifesting. The lower keep quiet. The power of the highest have come over you. Therefore, the child you will bring to birth will be called Holy Child. <laughs> Holy child, holy son of God. Verse 36. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son? Oh, as he is, she is. Everyone called barren. Men of God, Elizabeth was married legally. But yet, Jesus didn't come through Elizabeth and Zechariah. That was the priesthood. But Jesus didn't come through that priesthood. That was an anointed who. The Bible says in Ezra chapter 2 or 3, he said, A Levi gave birth. A Levi met a Levi. So they have Moses. So two anointed who came together, they produced Moses. But the one here is there is no standard. My point to arrive to every child is a gift. Now your willingness can bring him being. Abraham and Isaac, they were willing. You know, this one not going to men. It's not, I mean, because lack of knowledge before, this is not going to you women. A go to people because of the lack of support. This own your own child because of people condemnation. Oh, you're not married. You have the child. You do this one. You see, if you go back then to the tradition, there were some things our father understood and they kept. And the recent generation coming acting that they know. Men of God. Can I tell you something? You believe it? It's not the story of Jesse and David. Do you know that Jesse had sons but a wife? And David was separated. David in our normal saying in our days. Who was he? He was the Oscar child. You know how much Jesse's son, the greatest, was the Oscar child? Greatest was the answer child. How many of you know that Leah and Rachel had a conflict? A very serious conflict between Leah and Rachel. Do you know that Leah had more sons? Because Rachel provoked Leah. And then David, I mean, Jacob concubines have other sons that make Jacob 12 sons. But out of Jacob 12 sons, only one. And the one that came out to make all the sons powerful was the hated son. No human stand up for human being. The only thing you do, you just preserve yourself if you're not really. No. But I will marry. Then I born. Forget it. And I'm married can get bony. No. 
Oh, I got a people here. <laughs> you think I'm married and get po- baby? I did try my best to explain. It's unexplainable. You can't get that picture. Most of you standing here, you are a mystery. You are a mystery to your generation. A mystery to your... How can you explain a child that I've come to become a savior? How you want to explain a child? Himani, Mary, Hippani, Joseph. And what about this? That Men of God. Jesus had a very serious controversial in his upbringing. Study very well. To believe him was a complication. This may why a man go creep and burn him. So the priesthood as it, you you get what I'm saying, right? In the priesthood, the priesthood tried to push Jesus outside because of the circumstances surrounding your breath. Say no. No, 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 no. You can't be born like this. Then you get the kind of position. No. No. But before you were born, I knew you. I get to know you when you were born. Like your parents trying to know you while you were born. Your colleagues trying to know you. Amakabo Shata. Your friends are trying to know you, but he knew you. Before you came in the womb. My God, you were not formed in the womb. You were not made in the womb. The womb was a place for you to pass and come out. Someone near your greatness is hanging in the atmosphere. I don't know how you were born, why you were born, the way in which you were born. But I prophesy to you today, if I hear your amen, you are standing on high ground. You are standing on high ground. You were born for greatness. Destiny is upon your head. Your manifestation shall happen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You will not go down in this wicked war. You remain standing among your enemies. I decree and I declare there is an assignment you were born for. There is a purpose you were born for. There is a reason you were born for. Every reason you were born for. It will manifest. It will manifest. I say it will manifest. You didn't come here on a careless note. You came here on a very important assignment. I'm here to anoint your two feet. To step into your assignment. The place where you stand in. If it is the cross for your sin. If it is the cross for your pain. Today the oil that is coming upon your head. Between now to the end of March. Your position is about to change. That means child of God. Where you stand has a very serious impact. A man called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was standing behind the tree. Because of where he was standing. He could not see Jesus at all. He changed his position. In the realms of the spirit. In the atmosphere. In our generation. I change your position. I pray for you today. And the one on the sound of my voice. Everywhere you are standing are putting you down. Some of you are in the drawer ends family. Some of you are standing in the drawer ends. Some of you are standing in Ayababo Shatter. You are standing in feces in your dream. That is what she became feeling from around your life. But today, everywhere you are standing, that bringing she- that bringing disgrace and shame to you. I pray for you this evening. God is changing your position. That your amen is not correct at all. I get your amen, your position change. I say your position change. Your position change. Your position change. I take you from the back. I push you to the front. I take you from the hole. I put you on the rack. Your position change. Everywhere you are standing, that draining you down, pulling you down, suppressing you, suffocating you. Today I put you up. I put you up. I put you up. I put you up. Say love. Say love. 
seen my position. Ask your neighbor, say, where are you standing? Say it again, say, where are you standing? Some of you, I stretch my hands to you. If you are standing over your grave, I cover that grave. If you are standing over your casket, I break that casket. If you are standing over the affliction, I put you for over that affliction. If you are standing over accident, I pull you for over accident. Everywhere you standing, that does not mean good for you. Your position changed tonight. A change 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 tonight. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Please catch me your two hands wherever you are. There is a last Wednesday in this month called March. Please help me to take a few prayers. Say, Father, my Father. I want to hear you loud. Say, Father, my Father. I will clap my hands and pray. Every evil ground my feet is planted. Say, Lord, relocate my feet. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Every evil ground my feet is planted in the realms of the spirit. Lord, relocate my feet. Relocate my feet. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. There will be divine relocation. Divine relocation. send Moses back because of the hardship of Egypt what would have become the liberation of the children of Israel you see yesterday in my prayer the old man said I sent a lot of people he said but you send them back to me because of your man Lord and the Lord opened my eyes just as your parents manage. So there was no food. Everyone seated here. The only thing, sometimes you don't even have control over them. If it is not there, it's not there. But no man. No man. Who told you say, because you have a woman, that like you have a, the human being? You are not the owner of the human being. No. That woman could say, no. Then what would have become the war if Mary would have said, injure, I hear everything, but I respect my husband. We got two weeks to marry. So for the reason, I agree. And God said, Mary, that you will. Mary, you came here for this purpose. All the men looking at me. The only thing you, females, look at yourself, look at the situation. Or you don't, you see, that are error, that are control error. Or you see, when a child giving you a hard time, nothing is powerful than prayer. Nothing. You can go for them, bring them, da them, do they, da da, they, you are hitting your head. Go back. All of you, you hear me? If God gives you a human being, your first responsibility, give it back to Him. At a young age, 
You know why battles in our days? Because some of us, our dedication is the problem. We will not give them back. God gave you human being. Rush back to him to his house. Father, as you bring him or she, you will raise him, you will take care of him. Some of you now look at him and say, How you came up? All your parental status. All of you are hearing me. On no condition. The only thing is that not carelessly. Some of you, do you know now? You are the savior in your family. And it is through you they are getting to know God. Lift your hand and say, Father. Say as I pray. Say, let your oil fall on my hair. Let the purpose I was born for come to pass. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Let the oil fall on my head. Who knows? That person I'm making you cry today could be the one making you laugh tomorrow. Let the oil fall on my head. Yes. Yes. Pray that prayer just one minute. Some of us here, our experience are very bad. When we see night, sir, we see each other in mud. When we go to bed, some of us find ourselves running. We'll be challenged. We find ourselves running, but we can run fast. Why? Because we are planted in places that each, I mean, that, 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 that cause us to each. That's why you see everything about you is coming. It will start coming fine. All of a sudden, before you made up your mind, it will come in by a hitch. It will come in by a hitch. Anywhere you are planted in an evil mud, today your fish will be rooted from that place. Everywhere you are crossing, Father, Father, every evil mud my feet is planted in. As I pray, I am a rooted right now. Open your mouth, lift your feet. Pray that day. 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 Everywhere they plot you, everywhere they hit you, everywhere they face for you. Pray that prayer. Things always hitching. Everything about you hitching. Everything about you hitching. Sorry, the things start dragging coming. Daniel, for 21 days, he started the very first day of the 21 day. I released the blessing. Then why are you still doing here? Daniel said, But Lord, I haven't seen it yet. He said, Oh, the priest, who's the priest of Pasha? That cutting thing and catching thing in the way. Who make things to be hitching? Say, my father, my father. Say, as I cut my hands and pray. Every demon that hitches in my life. Every 
every demon that eats in my life, 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 Holy Ghost, fire, 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 just pray. Just pray, pray, pray. Every demon that eats in my life. Fire! 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 Do Kabbalah! Hey! My father, my father, as I clap my hands and pray, Everywhere my process is, everywhere my document is, everywhere my money is, everywhere my blessing is, Holy Ghost fire, my ministry is, my traveling process is, my finance is, my business is, my money is, my blessing is, my favor is. Hey, if you pray, they will release it. If you pray to release, if you pray to release, ya kaparado sata, a kaparada, i kaparado, ma krutopo, ma rabayada, rebayada ya, e kaparado, ma kusata, rebarara, libo koto, ma koraba, e baragada, every hitches of experience over the year, over the time, my father. As I pray tonight by the force of grace, every hitches, my paper hitch, my process hitch, my employment hitch, my document hitch, my passport hitch, everything I continue to hitch tonight as I pray. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, look at that. They are about to release it, they are about to get it back, they are about to get it back by folks, by fire, by folks, by fire, everything I hitch pertaining to you. Hey, Kabbalah, look at it, look at it, look at it. Every year, you will see hitches. Every year, you will see hitches. Every year, you will see hitches. But this month, before it end, everywhere, my money hitch, my document hitch, my paper hitch, my process hitch, my marriage hitch, my settlement hitch. Lord, as I pray, I come on fire. I come on fire, come on fire. Is that how you pray? No more itches. No more itches. No more itches. Today is your day. For God to visit you. No more itches. The thing will start going fine. Out of a sudden, a hitch. It will start fine. Out of a sudden, a hitch. It will come to a point, a hitch. But Lord, 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 I will pray. The devil will make mess of me. I will pray. I will pray. This is a praise season. A praise season. A season to pray. Open your mouth and say something. It will not hitch again. It will not hitch. You are about to settle. But out of a sudden, a hitch. You are about to do a business. Out of a sudden, a hitch. You are about to have a document. Out of a sudden, a hitch. You are about to be employed. Out of a sudden, a hitch. Open your mouth and pray one more minute. That's the last prayer. One more minute. No more hitches. Flow. Say that again. Say let that be a flow. A flow means 
there are some of us here. It will just get to it. There are few more days to it. It will black. Three more days, it black. Five more days, it black. Anyone standing and blocking my blessing. No mercy for the wicked. Anyone standing and blocking my blessing. Anyone blocking things from happening. Things from passing. Say, my father, my father. With anger and bitterness. Say, father. Whoever blocking my blessing. Whoever blocking my way. Whoever blocking my settlement. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Say, my father, my father. Every man or woman. Or serpent spirit. Demon spirit. Witchcraft spirit. Blocking my blessing. Blocking my destiny. Blocking my flow. Fall down and aspire. Fall down and aspire. Turn out to prayer. Sometimes you just have to pray. You don't know who's blocking your way. Three more minutes. Three more minutes. That strong man in your mother's house. That strong man in your father's house. Stunning in a way, blocking your blessing, blocking your life, blocking your destiny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yakaparata, makaparata, yaparada, ya, yakaparada, 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 makobara, yaparada, ya. Before they kill you, deal with them before they deal with you. Who was blocking my blessing, blocking my opportunities, blocking my flows, standing in the way, pushing people away from me, pushing people away from me. So for another wish to live, father and I, father and I, father and I, father and I, my father, father, who are blocking my way. Blocking my blessing, blocking my traveling, blocking my opportunity. Ya barada ya, makabara, paradosa. Deal with them before they deal with you. If they fight you by night, fight them in prayer. They threaten you by their evil altar. They threaten you in witchcraft form. They threaten you in demonic form. Fight them in prayer. Fight them in prayer. Fight them in prayer. Fight them in prayer. The man will pray. Then God will answer.
Stretch your hands to me. Hey, where you are? Who blocking your ways? Who blocking your blessing? From today, God shall block them for your sake. I said the Lord shall block them for your sake. Every one of you there, all shall please just keep them there. Check those people, look at them, look up to them for me. I pray for you wherever you are. Whoever kept blocking you and standing in front of things that will happen for you, from today they shall stand no more. I said they shall stand no more. They shall stand no more. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Cross his face to shine on you. Your oil is blessed. You are anointed. Nobody shall stand before you. You shall not fall in errors. You shall not fall in mistakes. God shall keep you. You shall enjoy your life. You shall become fruitful. You shall walk in fruitfulness. You shall not be fruitless in your generation. You will not see shame. You will not see evil. Every evil eyes that monitoring you, they shall go down for your sake. They go blind for your sake. You are preserved. The one who kept you from January, February, March, he will open the gate of April to you. You will enter April safely. You will not die by accident. You will not die by poison. You will not die by evil. You will not die by sickness. No man born by woman can kill you. Anyone that plays trouble for you to get into trouble, they plan trouble for you to get in your trouble. I hear amen. God bless you. I said, God bless you. I said, God bless you. Holy Ghost. Thank you.